Davi Sharma and today we have a new episode in the Art of Davi YouTube channel and today we'll be checking out the work of Evan, Avon Cagle. Um, I found this guy first through um, Pinterest I believe and then I uh, refound his work, refound. <laughs> uh, this guy's work through character design references. I will link this page by the way in the uh, description below and I was all, I will also include the the page of Avon Cagle. I'm on Twitter. Now the issue is on his um, media tab, it's a bit cluttered. <laughs> it's a, it, a, a lot of GIFs, so it's kind of a... Uh, obviously you can see the inks and everything else, but um, I do recommend the the character design references page on the website. I will also link this in the... Uh, below. And... Um, yeah, so going back to this specific piece, uh, I found this piece through, like, it, it was so eye-catching the first time I saw it because usually for this kind of atmospheric vibe, I was thinking, oh shit, this was done, where it's usually, like, in my mind, I'm thinking it's a painting or some kind of rendering, but seeing it in ink form, it just feels so surreal and different. And, uh, cause usually when you look at inked work, it's, it's, it's usually like graphic. For example, if you look at this part here, let me just try and, um, encircle this thing. Like it's usually very bold and graphic and just dark and lots of really big shapes. But for this kind of thing, where it's all just really tight, really small type of line work, if, if you've ever used like traditional inks, um, just think of using like a 0 0.01, 0 0.2, like a uni pen or uh, a micro pen, like a copy kind of liner type of pen. <laughs> and it just takes too long to do these sorts of things. So I think that's why it's not as popular to do it. So maybe that's why um, it feels even more unique because it's rarely done anyway. And I think it's just really cool to see because let me just zoom in on this piece. Now, obviously, it's an Evangelion fan art. Obviously, you know, it's a very common classical um, anime. So this is Shinji right here with the Ava 1, I believe, Mecha. And it does really feel like it's from the anime. It's so well done. Um, I'm not really sure. Let's try to break it down. Like, why does it feel so big? Why does it feel like there's some kind of atmosphere that... Because usually when you look at comic art, manga art, uh, when you look at each panel, it feels flat. I mean, I get it. It's more focused on uh, like a, a certain flow and such. But for a singular piece like this, like it just pulls you in so much, even if it's just made up of lines. Now, I'm sure there's way more techniques here that I not, that, that I'm not really aware of because I don't really do inks. Because right now, just focusing it, I do see a lot of like dotted lines. So it's not just a bunch of straight lines, right? So that's a, that's a way of doing the fade out effect by using da dash or dotted lines. And uh, leaving some white space in. It's pretty minimal. It's about 10% of the entire image. Um, so mainly for like the fog or the highlights to help make this Ava mech pop out more. I do see some dotted lines and when it comes to the actual like straight lines I think it's the spacing that matters because for the line weight it feels like it was done with one line weight and then to make it more tight obviously you just make the lines come closer together so the, the less spacing the more dense it looks you can clearly tell that I'm not really equipped to break these things down, but it's just, it's a, it's a very weird, interesting technique. Even this light post looks amazing. Look, look at how it fades out in the bottom. And even here in the background, it's, uh, it's just one silhouette, but it's not like, it's not done this way. If you look at the foreground, a post, it's just one black thing, but this post right here is more like uh, shaded in with really small line work. 
I'm not exactly sure how this was done. Even this uh, foreground right here with this kind of broken road or highway. Like it feels so 3D. Anyway, let's look at the, even the birds are kind of cool. It does have like a solid line work um, silhouette or contour to kind of make it pop out. And I think what makes or, or what adds scale is obviously this character right here, Shinji, but also um, these birds and a lot of architectural uh, drawings or paintings, illustrations. You, you do see often like it's not just the actual like human figure that's added, but also like birds to kind of add that sense of grandeur scale. Uh, for example, for this piece, it's not exactly just... Um... Wait, in the, in the last Evangelion piece, I don't see, or I did not see a lot of cross hatching, but for this guy, for this Minotaur, is it? <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, but it's a fantasy. Oh shit. And those are heads, by the way. I do see a bit more cross hatching because for the Evangelion mech, the lines go with the forms of the, the mecha, I've noticed. Huh, because since I do more like painting, I guess there is because in when, when you do digital art, there is this concept of brush variety where you, you utilize different brush strokes, different types of brushes to add a bit of flavor to your painting, right? But I guess the same can be said for inks. There is ink variety as well. Um, maybe it's because I'm not really in this space. So it's kind of a new concept to me, but... Yeah, look at how this guy is rendered. The foreground uh, fella here. And you focus the way it's rendered. And you contrast that to this... Um, creature over here like obviously you will see some white space here and again if you zoom out it's like less than 10 percent of it or maybe 10 percent is left white and then the rest of it is rendered with ink um so i do see way more denser brush strokes here or sorry um cut brush strokes uh maybe it's like a marker at this point to really help the foreground pop out even more but this guy here, even though it's mainly in the silhouette, it's mainly in shadow, like the light is coming from behind this tree over here, right? Oh shit, so maybe th the first lines go with the form, you can see. And then you do an extra ink phase again, do the shadows, to make it even more darker. Now, if you're an anchor, you're probably like, what the fuck is this guy saying? Um, but yeah, just so interesting. I I've never thought of atmospheric kinds of things. I will link, by the way, a uh, a YouTube channel I found recently. She does a lot of like ink tutorials. It's a fairly new channel, um, but she explores a lot of like different styles from ink artists or like graphic ink kind of comic slash manga artists. And uh yeah, I think she she does go into detail into this kind of concept of like atmosphere or creating atmosphere with just inks. Fuck, even the way the light is done here. Let me just go back. Like it's so meticulous, like the light rays are even. <laughs> My suggestion is to do this digitally because this would probably take forever. Anyway, but it's so cool to look at. Let's see the other piece. Uh, this one's kind of blurry, so I'll skip this guy, but it's the same thing. It looks like it was, it was rendered in pencil, but, it, but it's not because it's done in ink. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> but the fire effect is pretty cool, right? Look at that. And again, it, it, it uh, maybe slightly more. 15, 10 to 15, 10 to 15 percent of it is in white or left white. But even the way the glow effect is done, 
and again with the uh with the oh shit the the dotted lines where their dash is in a way i've noticed that too um so and definitely the pen you have to use would have to be so thin or so like tiny like 0.1 0.2 to the point where you can hardly uh see the the actual strokes from from afar if you look at the background here it does get a bit more abstract kind of like painting if you do digital digital painting or you know, traditional painting you do tend to use bigger broader brush strokes and a lot of what's in the background tends to kind of become it becomes more like basic and abstract and i guess it's a way to contrast the more detailed um foreground in this case uh, the forest, the frame, it's framing obviously this character, but everything around it. Right? And the yellow part is like super detailed. And for this guy, the pants is left as white. Very interesting. It almost feels incomplete in a way, but maybe it's a, a conceptual piece. And if we just zoom in a bit here. The strokes do go with the form. I do see some negatives happening here where it's black first and then you add the white inks. Right? Even with the, the bottom part of this tree, I think it was done in black first. And then you add like uh, the white stuff or the white lines after. Is this like an etched? Because I do, I, I, I am kind of vaguely familiar with etched artwork and it does have the same vibe so i don't know very interesting and i do like the fade out effect let me just do the do this thing again where it goes where if you have a figure here instead of like drawing the silhouette you kind of uh right you kind of let it fade out instead of using contour lines. It does have the same vibe, I guess. So anyway, let me, let me just quickly uh, scroll through um, like the this page, the character design page, reference page for this um, even Kegel guy. So I think it does, I think most of it is done traditionally, but yeah, if we're thinking of using inks, I'm not really an inker, but you know, it's um you don't have to actually practice that very medium to be inspired by that um artwork or piece, you know. And again, the line work is very small, or the uh, the pen rather, so I guess it helps to make the the drawing look bigger as well. I'm not seeing a lot of gray tones being used, like um, like a half tone kind of sheet. Um, everything is wow. <laughs> Fuck. Um, look at how the sky is done. So I will definitely link that channel, that inking channel by that. I forgot her name, but she does delve into different inking techniques. And I think, well, fuck, to be, I think this is an alien fan art, right? Uh, you, you do need way more ink variety to be able to achieve this sort of unique look to your work. And maybe there's a bit of pointillism happening too, where it's, you know, a bunch of dotted lines. Or maybe this kind of white stuff is done with an airbrush. Maybe. Who knows? But this one's kind of colored, you know, the figure here. Now this one's pointillism. It does have that kind of pointillism look to it. So yeah, really small, tiny um, ink pens. But so yeah, I, I guess I'm not really sure how to apply this to my own work because I don't do inks a lot, but it's the atmosphere. And really, it's the Evangelion piece <laughs> that, that I uh, that I like the most. Let me just go back. I mean, look at this guy. 
Even the way the hands are done, it feels so like tired and broken. And you can even see some etched or broken parts in its head. It's so iconic. I do recommend you download this specific piece because it's so nice to look at. It's so pretty. Let me just um, zoom in again. Oh shit, it's ugly. Okay. So yeah, I guess that's it for this art view of Avon Kegel. Um, I guess the only take the major takeaway here would be to add atmosphere to your work. Now it doesn't have to be ink. It doesn't have to be like this guy, but it feels so majestic. Like you're, like there are certain concept art pieces you'll find on ArtStation where everything everything just seems massive. You know, like whether it be you're in space or you're in some kind of natural a landscape. There's a certain epicness that can be achieved. I mean, it's not a complicated, like, like it, it still has a basic formula where you have the foreground is darker and then the background is way lighter than the foreground, you know? But if you find a way to achieve this, as much as it's still in ink and there's no like painting involved, it's still about value. So maybe that's a takeaway. Really be uh, aware of how you illustrate your value. Because if you zoom out, the more you zoom out, obviously you can. Har it's hard to see the the actual like lines, but it works. You know, like the value seems correct, right? So. Whether you're painting or doing some inks or pencils, uh, try to play with your values to achieve um, this kind of atmosphere. And I think there has to be a very long range or a wide range. If it's too close, if the darks are too close to the lights where it's not a wide gap, it's going to feel more flat, kind of like a basic manga or comic page. But if you have like really darks or <laughs> really dark like values to uh, this kind of almost like white and you have like the entire range of values in it i think it's going to become more real your illustration is, is going to become more like filled up or more 3d i guess so maybe that's the takeaway from this guy's work so i do recommend you follow him um on his twitter page or x page uh, i will link the character design references page as well because they do recommend a lot of uh different artists and um yeah that's it for this art review um i'll see you in the next one bye